I know you guys had a Father's Day thing here this morning, and I'm going to touch on it a little bit. We won't be here long. Actually, we'll be there a little while because I'm I'm thankful today. I'm thankful for my Father in heaven. I'm thankful for my earthly fathers. Don't get me wrong. I'm very thankful for them as well. And and and, and as I stand here today, it, it Tim brother Tim came over and gave me a hug. He said, "Make sure you thank God every day for what He's given you." So I stood there and I watched from from my smallest out here in the real world smallest <laughs> to Anna to Abby and, and each of their voices were different but each of them so pure so innocent I don't care if they sounded terrible to everybody else I know those three were up here pouring their heart out to the Lord yes. they were out here they were up here to glorify him and to yes. lift him up not not care and oftentimes I think as a Christian we could all take a little bit of note from Anna Lee. She comes up here. She may be off key. I think she's a good singer overall, but she could be off key. She could be screaming. She could be doing whatever. And I don't care because she's doing it pure from a pure heart straight to the ears of our Lord and Savior in heaven, wanting to give him praise because, because of what he's done for us. She is four years old, going to be five, or five years old, going to be six in October. And, and she is up here not even really understanding, but doing what she knows, if that makes sense. She doesn't understand what she's doing, but she's doing it because that's what she was raised to do. If we would all take a little bit of a note and take that embarrassment factor away from our lives, and we would look at things through a five-year-old's eyes, and we would look at things and say, I don't care what another 58, 60, 84-year-old woman might say to us. I'm going to do it for my God and do it. We might get somewhere. We might make it a little bit farther. We might be able to turn another page or two in somebody's book. We might be able to bring in a lost sheep like we're supposed to. Amen. But instead, we're ashamed. We're embarrassed. Because if I say that and they're not receptive to it, I might have just ruined a relationship with somebody. Well, let me just go ahead and tell you right now, that relationship isn't built on love. If you're, if you're going to let them go the way that they're living their life or maybe miss the opportunity to get them to become into the body of Christ and become a brother or a sister in Christ, if you let that opportunity slip because you're afraid of hurting their feelings, that's not the type of friend I want. When I'm <laughs> off, I need somebody to tell me I'm off. And I'm going to do the same for them. Ryan, Stephen, you stand up here, buddy, and, and, and lead service. That's a big step. Yes. It truly is. When I prayed back there earlier, Peter took that first step. That's the hardest part. It's scary. It's scary to get out of the boat. It's comfortable in the boat. Yeah. Nothing can hurt you there. Peter walked on water. That's not comfortable. Think about that. Take a step out. and Put yourselves in Peter's shoes. You're standing there. It's like, oh. This ain't right. We all can we can all feel that way, right? Yes. Your yes. whole life you may have been living of the world, and now you're leading a church service. It may not feel right. It may feel a little bit odd. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you stay obedient, you continue to listen to the Lord and continue to let him guide us, not just Ryan, but anybody in here, as he continues to take you step for step for step, yes. you continue to be obedient. The things that become odd is what you used to do. Man, what a knucklehead I was. Yeah. Man, what was I thinking? Yeah. I skipped church to go golfing on a Sunday? What was I doing? Amen, Abby. That was those moments. I can look back on it. I can say, what were you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I thank God for, for letting things kind of fall into place and it'll let you get to a place where we aren't supposed to. We're supposed to be content wherever we are, but I don't think God means that as our walk with him. We're supposed to, we're not supposed to want. For things okay he'll give us what he needs and we're to continue to follow him but we do not need to just get content with our walk with him and then glory glory about where we came from okay it's okay to use it as a testimony it's okay to use it as a praise report but that's that's finished business okay if we continue to look at finished business all this unfinished business ahead of us and the lives that are in front of us we may never touch because we're so focused on 
well, last week or last month, I did this. That ought to get me through about three good months. I did my random act of kindness this week. Check that off on Monday. I ain't got to worry about it Tuesday through Saturday. I can just be in my own world. We got it wrong. We've got it wrong. I talked to you earlier about Anna Lee up here singing to God, not caring how she sounded, okay? <laughs> we as Christians oftentimes look at the checkbox and we say, oh, well, there's going to be a bunch of people at the grocery store all going to have to push this cart back to their place. Check mark. And that's the only, that's the only Christ-like thing we did all day. Yeah. We'll put on a show. We like the show. Yeah. But we don't always like to dig in a little bit. We don't always like to, to, to answer the phone at, at late at night whenever it's sleeping time. We don't always like to go and, and go into a different place or go and talk to somebody that's really in a struggle and you have nothing to say to them. I talked to a gentleman today, uh, and, and this, this gentleman is, is a little bit older in years, and, and uh, the church we were at this morning, I won the Youngie Dad Award. It made me feel good. It said right on the sticker, Youngie. I said, woo! He won the Oldie. All right, that's, that's the gentleman I was talking to. So we were outside, we were talking, and he said, it's not comfortable. He said, it's not always comfortable, is it? I said, absolutely, it's not comfortable. I said, before before two weeks ago, I never knew any of y'all. I said, and here we are. He said, he said, you mentioned it this morning. He said, going into tough conversations, you've got to go because he'll give you the words. He said, let me tell you a story. And as, as I stood there and I listened, guys, I've learned real quick that you got to you got to listen. As Tim, as Tim just talked about earlier, we've got to be an ear to people. How, what they're telling you, you're probably going to need in about six months, if that long. The people that come into your paths and want to pour into you today, you're going to use that information because the next time you might be the one pouring into somebody from the exact same words that man gave you. But he said, I, he said, somebody, he said, the church called me. He said, and since I'm the old bogey, I had to go. He said, I, I had to go to this place and, and talk to this gentleman because he was dying and, and we didn't, nobody else, want, nobody else could do it. He said, but he really relates to you. You go. And he's like, how am I supposed to talk to somebody that's dying? I've never died. He said, I've never been there. He said, what am I going to say? But he went and he talked to that man. And, and a few months later, a couple weeks later, the gentleman said, he said he was at their funeral. And, and as they were at the funeral, there, this woman came up to him and said, you don't understand what your words meant to him. Yes. You don't understand how much of an encouragement you were that day. Yes. He went from not knowing a word to say, not knowing a thing. To be an encouragement for that man to live a couple yeah. more months, to get a little bit more out of life. That's right. That's why it's important to pour into people. That's why it's important to listen. And, and as I as I as I say that, there's times, there's things, and I, and I talked on it this morning a little bit, and uh, I, I talked a little bit about it being Father's Day. I talked about Anna Lee, and I talked about Emberly, and I talked about the birth, how their births were different, and I and I got to thinking, and it talks about in. Uh, in the Bible, it talks about the travail period, okay? It's the same as a labor period for a woman right now. Um, and uh, how each of them is different. Each and every one of us were at a labor period in our life. Each and every one of us had a travail period. We all had at some point, we were all born again. We were all, we all accepted Christ. And if you haven't, you probably ought to do that tonight. Just going to be honest with you and just be blunt with you, okay? But we all have had that moment. We've all had that moment where we had to be born again, where we had to take our old self and watch it die and become a new version of ourself. Okay? Honestly, I, I like Father's Day. All right? They took me out to eat today. It was a good day. But I tell you what, the day that I was saved is the greatest Absolutely. Father's Day because I came to know a father that has my eternal, my eternal, let's focus on that word for a second, well-being in mind. He sent his only son so I could have my eternal being. That's my father. Okay? He adopted each and every one. He, he let us come into a family. He sent his son. He, I forget, maybe it, was, it was, maybe it was Brother Ben a while back or something, but he talked about how when you adopted somebody into your family in the old days, you couldn't get rid of them. Yeah, that's right. But if it was your own kin and you didn't, if they did something wrong, you could kind of kick them out. Absolutely. See you on your way. Yeah. Listen, we have all been adopted into this thing. We have all been blood bought because of what Jesus did. Okay, yeah. let's stop there and just go ahead and thank Him for that, because that is what is going to get us to heaven. That's what's got your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We couldn't do anything. Nothing on this earth. Understand, nothing on this earth would be possible or worth doing if we didn't have the eternal, the, our eternal salvation someday. If we didn't have Jesus, if we didn't have the promise that He went to the cross for us to have a brighter day at the end of the day. Our normal days wouldn't matter. We wouldn't have a purpose.
If we didn't get a, if we didn't have an advocate with the Father, if we didn't, if God wouldn't have sent His Son and done all this for us, we wouldn't be here today. Right. When you put it in that perspective, it's easy to be thankful for it. Yes. Yes. But oftentimes we're busy. We are busy people. And, and it's, 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 as they were up here singing, I. I, I, I share your song. I'm so blessed. I stood there and I thought, man, I, I'm so blessed that God has given me a wife that can sing, that will sing. Yeah. Okay, she'll go into places. As a minister, I can tell you right now, if you want a good message from a preacher, or you want somebody to be able to have the liberty just to to, to pour it out straight from him through me into you, if you want that, you're going to have to have good worship. You have to have good praise. I tell you right now, I planted grass seed over there when I fr when I tried to shortcut it, Ramona. I tried to shortcut and just throw some grass on some bare ground. It was bare. There was nothing there. I'm telling you, it was bare. But it was rocky. It wasn't great soil. But I threw the grass seed down. I said, oh, it'll grow. There's enough grass. It might. It should be able to, to, to kind of, I don't know what the name of it is. But it should be able to grab a hold there and grow. Little did I know, a lot of hundred dollars later, I realized that my grass was not going to grow the way that it should. It grew spotchy. Okay, it grew in little sections here and there and over the yonder, and and it, it kind of looked okay in some places, but I could have cut my grass with scissors. Yeah. I could have went out there and and, and splat and then little splotches, and I could cut cut it with scissors. That's about all the grass mowing I'd had it done. And I said, well, I messed up. So I re I backed up and I punted the football and I said, well, let's try her again. Grandpa came over and he helped cultivate the ground a little bit. He helped break the ground enough that the seed would go down into the ground and then it would have good soil. All right. We, we oftentimes refer to the parable about Jesus telling the disciples how he taught the spoken parable. Some of it would fall on the briar. Some of it would fall on the sand, but some of it would then fall on good soil. Okay. The good soil is important. We have got to create good soil. The only way I know how to do that is to A, fellowship, and B, praise the Lord. Get your hearts right because there's a lot of baggage that will bring people will bring in with them that will cover their yard. We have to do a little bit of picking up. I, I love my kids. I, I love them. Some of their yard toys we could do without. I'm just going to be honest. It'll sit there. And it'll sit there so long, guess what it does under the grass underneath? Kills it. Guess what? Some of us have some yard toys in our grass this evening. We ain't moved it, and we ain't, we ain't been able to put the seed in certain spots. We, we're okay in places where we can see. We can see things from the road. We can see it, and it looks really good. I make sure my front yard looks better than my backyard. I got a big house like blocks my backyard, okay? I'm okay with that because I can hide stuff back there, all right? But from the road, people can see my front yard. I make sure it's nice and tidy. On a Sunday, what do we call it when we get dressed up to go to church? Yeah. Our Sunday's best, right? That's what some churches, if you're in your Sunday's best, you might as well not come in. Give me a church that will let people come in and whatever they're dressed in, however they look, but they're on fire and they've got a yard that wants seed planted for the Lord. Give me that. Yes. That's what I want in life. I want to be around people that want their grass. And I tell you what, I want to be the one to help throw grass in everybody's yard. I want to be able to walk by on a Tuesday evening, Ramona, and see that you're having a rough day. I want to be able to throw some seeds your way to help fill a void that might be in your yard. I don't know what it is. We all have our own place. We all have our own walk. We all have our own spot. Yes. And we're protective of it. Yes. Sure. We're in a world that says we do not, you do not know where I'm vulnerable and I'm not going to let you know where I'm vulnerable. I'm not going to show you my weaknesses. I'm going to put on a strong front because in today's world, if you let somebody help you, you're almost helpless. That's the world that we live in. Yeah. Either you're a hero or you're a nobody. Seems to be the world we're living in today. There is the art of finding the middle and the compromise. That seems to be well done. And until we turn back to God, it's going to continue to be a broad, broad divide. Yes. Kind of like the Bible tells me about a straight and narrow road and kind of tells me about a broad, a broad road that leads to destruction. That's kind of where we're at in life. We, 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 Abby's back there making the motions. I know exactly what she's thinking. And facing the giants, you got the kicker. He said it can look like a dying duck, but it's got to go through the uprights. It can't go wide left or wide right. That's how our walk is, right? We have got to go through the uprights. However it is, we've got to make sure we make heaven our home. 
And once we do that, then we got to be able to help the other people. That's what I was trying to get to a second ago before I was distracted by my wife back here doing hand gestures. But that's okay. Um, that's he sent her to me to help me out. So that's I swear. But kind of going to this week, all that wasn't even something I wanted to say. But here we are. Um, this week we went, we let Anna Lee go down to her aunt in uh, in North Carolina, and and she left on Monday morning, and she came back yesterday evening. Dad had the privilege of leaving Friday morning at 8 a.m., 8 30. Because you know, we live in we live in Elizabeth or around Ward County, where if you go to fill up on gas because you're in a hurry, you're guaranteed to stop and see somebody. You get to the gas station at about 8 20, go in, first vehicle pulls in. That's my dad. Ain't getting away from him for a minute. So we stand there, we talk. Conversation wrapping up. The I love you. Be careful. Let me know when you make it. Good conversation. Open the door. Actually, I go to put the gas nozzle back. And as I took the gas nozzle back, I see a silver Toyota Tacoma pull in. Well, that is my stepdad and my mom and my brother. Mind you, I have Emberly in my back seat. These conversations wouldn't last nearly as long as I didn't have a kid. I promise you. All right. As, and once you have kids, you realize real quick that. That the grandkids, it's no longer like you show up and it's like, hey, mom, where's the grandkids? Huh? Thanks, mom. Love you, too. That's, that's kind of how life goes now, okay, once you have grandkids. And, and as, I, as I was getting ready to put the gas nozzle back, I said, well, look at the courthouse clock that was right there. That hand has went from 820 to about 845. And I'm like, really, like to be on the road right about now. I could have been almost a ripple. Yeah. So we sat there and they back in and we, we start talking. And, and, and here we all are talking. And finally, about... Nine o'clock, I got to leave the gas station to start my journey that is a six hour journey south. Well, we're driving, and I got Emberly with me, and uh, she's in the back seat and she's doing her own thing. I wish she'd sleep, but she doesn't sleep. So she was back there and she was talking, and we drove about four hours, and I was getting hungry. Not, not to mind you, I need to use the bathroom. But I'm driving, and I said, Emberly, how about some, how about some chicken nuggets? Can we stop here? No. What do you mean? No. So, Ani, get to Ani. I said, okay. So we drive about another hour. I said, I'm really hungry, Kimberly. Can we please stop? I said, Ani's an hour away. No. Get to Uncle Allie. She calls, she calls her Uncle Allen. Uncle Allie. I said, all right. So we go a little bit farther. And I said, can we stop now? She said, nope. Not there yet. It's okay. Finally, we get there. We open the door. She runs in all excited. Mind you, you talk about your car being the crippler. I'm you sitting behind this know. driving wheel for six hours. I've never taken a trip for six hours straight in my life, Ramona. My wife, once again, blessed and love her dearly, cannot go but about three hours not pregnant without using the restroom. Okay? We get the pregnant wife, and now it's about two and a half. But... As we were going, I'd never done that. And I got out of the truck and I'm like, man, I'm <laughs> stiff. I was I was tired. But we got inside and, and I say all that to say this. That young lady, had, when we left the house, she knew where our destination was. She knew where we needed to get. She knew the quickest way there was from point A to point B. And no 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 roads off, no, no veering points, no, no obstacles, no, none of that. It was to go straight there, to stick straight to a plane. Follow the GPS until it gets us there. But I don't know about y'all, but whenever I was saved, Jesus said something about sending us the Holy Ghost to kind of keep to, to keep us until until He comes again, right? He, he's what He's kind of our GPS. He's kind of our roadmap per se to help us navigate this life. Emberly stuck to hers. We made it there, no stops when we left. The gas station said I'd arrive at 10.05. I had driven a little bit fast, and I had to, had it down to 10.03 until them stinking stoplights in Holly Springs, North Carolina, kept flashing red, and I got there at 10.05. I was ahead of schedule. And then, then stoplights slowed me down. They will. There's going to be times when we keep on this path, and we follow that GPS, and it tells us that we're going to get there at a certain time. I truly believe that Jesus would have already been back, but he said, it's not time. We added a few minutes. We hit a couple stoplights. 
because yeah. we're a little bit of a stubborn group. We're a little bit of a of a knucklehead group, if I might say so myself. Yeah. And and, and he, he's carrying a little bit. He said, "There, you need a little bit more time. You need it. You need to go and make those visits. You need to go. You need to stick to the plan that I have given you. You need to stick to what you're doing. But don't 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 tarry too long. We still right. we still got a place to go. We still got plenty of people to get in here. Okay. I listened to Tim's message this morning. We're picking teams, right? We, we got to get as many sheep as we can. Yes. Amen. Because there's a wolf out there that wanting to devour them. Yeah. Yep. And lost sheep aren't going to make it if we don't bring them in. Right, buddy. You ain't going to bring them in by your own vocabulary. I ain't that smart, right? I don't have a good enough vocabulary. English isn't a strong suit for me. <laughs> but I know a man that met a woman at a well yep. that told her, told her everything she'd done. I know a man that wants to come and, and sup with me and me with him. I know a man that is an advocate to the Father for me. We're all blessed to know that man. Yeah. Yes. We're all blessed for the sacrifice that he gave for us. And, and as we got down there, the record time or whatever, we got there, she ran in, gave hugs, the whole nine. But it was, it was a good trip down and and on the way back, I had both girls. Well, you know you're a blessed dad. Car ride by yourself with both girls in the back. That's that's when you realize that, that, that it's it's real, it's the real deal now. There is no mom. The quiet one that would just talk to dad and yell at dad now has a sister to chirp at. We chirp back. And before we know it, we have a full squawking session. Six hours. This time we couldn't stick to the GPS. We had to make stops. <laughs> we couldn't make this one on dad easier. But we stopped and and I I I uh, I know my, my I know my kids pretty well. And I said, listen, if we can make it to the halfway point, we'll stop for ice cream. I get them to behave until we got to the halfway point. Got them ice cream. Luckily, the time was about dark. They went back there. One of them went to sleep. The other one, I don't know what she did, but she didn't bother me. She was she was just quiet and would sing songs and and do different things. But as, as we get we get back to West Virginia, every time we see that tunnel, every time we go through it, we listen to "Take Me Home, Country Road" because we're back home. Yeah, we're back home. Listen, there's going to be a day that we get to reach our final home. We get to reach our everlasting home. We won't be singing John Denver. No, we're going to be singing a lot of praises, a lot of excitement, a lot of happiness. That's that's the road trip I'm excited to go on. I look at the I look at where I've been. I look at where I was at as a toddler. I talked about it this morning, and I'm going to go there in a second. I didn't know I was going everywhere else, but I'm going to go there for a second. But I talked up there at Prosperity this morning, and I talked about whenever. I shared it here before, but going hunting with, with my grandpa and who was just like a dad to me and, and my, my stepdad and my biological dad, I'd always wash their feet because I didn't want to make a noise, remember? Oh. I didn't want to be the reason to scare a deer away because I'd been told once or twice that I was too loud. Yeah. I wouldn't believe it. But now that I have kids of my own, yeah. I can see it. Yeah. But as I'm and, and hunting with Remington, I can see it. So. <laughs> As, as I walked, I would look at their feet. And I, I would look and I would step. If there was a footprint there, I knew the leaves were smashed right there. So I could step there. It was a safe place to step. And I would do the same thing with this foot. And we would continue to do that until we got where we are going. And be like, did you see that? No, I didn't. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? You, what, what are you looking at? Well, I was looking at your feet because I yeah. didn't want to make noise because the last time we went, I made yeah. noise and I didn't want to do that yeah. again because the squirrel never came the last time and I knew it was because of me. Yeah. And you tried to hide it, but you didn't do a very good job of it. Yeah. And I knew I wasn't going to do that. So I kept my eyes at your feet. And I said, step for step, I was with you. Yeah. Well, you can't, you can't see anything if you're always looking at the ground. You're right. You can't. So I had to get my eyes up. But then I start making more noise. <laughs> but I can see things. But at some point in my life, I went from the one being behind. Now people are walking behind me. I've got two little girls walking behind me that are stepping where dad steps. Right. Yep. That's the facts. 
They're doing what dad does because yes, exactly. there's obviously a reason dad's doing it. Yes. One of my favorite, and Tim, I, I share this sentiment with you as well. Funerals are not my thing, okay? I do not like going to funerals, especially the ones that I love the most because it's hard. Selfishly, we want them here, but ultimately we know where they are if they've made the right decision. Funerals where you don't know if they've made the right decisions, those ones almost break you because you can't say you might see them again. You can't preach people into heaven if they're not there. Uh, it's either you are or you're not. People don't understand that. They, they seem to struggle with that, but my Bible tells me straight and narrow or broad and wide. But as, as most funerals, and, and I actually have this on a, on a picture on my wall, but it's the footprints in the sand poem. I'm going to read it real quick. But one night I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from life flashed across the sky. In each scene, I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints. Other times there was one only. This bothered me because I only, this bothered me because I noticed that during the low periods of my life, when I was suffering from anguish, sorrow, or defeat, I could see only one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord, you promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I have noticed that during the most trying periods of my life, there has only been one set of footprints in the sand. Why, when I needed you most, have you not been there for me? The Lord replied, the times when you have seen only one set of footprints, my child, is when I carried you. Let's look at that for a second. We're looking at it, and we look at a picture, and we look at this, and we look at the one set of footprints, and and we get a little bit grumpy because, well, we don't ever make mistakes. We don't ever fall short. We're, 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 we're perfect. But in all reality, that's when we needed held the most. When, my, when, when one of my girls fall and hurt themselves, it doesn't matter. It's daddy. And they come and run with their hands up. It could be not even a scratch. But to them, their world is, their world is in shambles. They hurt. And I pick them up. And I comfort them. Sometimes I use a distraction to help get away from the pain. But I comfort. When we fall as Christians, when we fall as adults, when we feel like we are going to go into a, a, a room and shut the door and just swallow in self-pity, we've got to run to Dad. That's fact. Those footprints that we often, that I referenced earlier about me watching my dad and my grandpa's footprints, we got to go to Dad and say, Dad, I'm tired. Dad, I'm trying. Help me. He'll pick you up. Yes. Matthew 7 11 tells us if, if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Yes. Where else do you turn? When everything is hitting the fan, where else do you turn? Don't The only one that put this world in motion. The one that spoke everything into existence. The one that wants to help you. The one that wants to dust you off. Tell you you're doing good, son. Pat you on the butt and tell you to go. Or you're doing good, daughter. Pat you on the butt and go. He knows we're not perfect. That's why he sent the perfect sacrifice. He knew we were going to fall short. He knew we were going to have tough times. He knew we were going to make some noise when we probably shouldn't. Listen, Ryan, you read from Peter. I relate a lot to Peter. Sometimes my mouth gets me in trouble. Old Peter's mouth got him in trouble. It's easy for us to look at him and be like, oh, Peter, here you go again. That's us. But that's us. It may not be a sin. And then we, were, we were at the Sunday school this morning over there, and, and a lady was talking about, she's like, I've always had a really hard time in my mind that all sin is evil. It's like sometimes. I, I want to justify it, and I want to put sin in a category. Sin is sin. Steal and lie. Break the sin. Whenever we, we fully dive into and we grasp what the Father has given us and the resources he has given us, we will then understand a little bit more. We will grasp a little bit deeper of what is going on in, in the world. Not just our world, but the world in general. And whenever other people are at spots and that, that they don't know where else to turn, we can say, hey, 
I'm not perfect either. Maybe I've not done X, Y, and Z, but I've done A, B, C. Don't look down on a parent because we're all sick. The difference is if you if you've been born again, you've got an advocate with the Father that it's it's making intercession for you and I right now. In John chapter sixteen. Find it here. Right here in verse 20 and 21. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Mm -hmm. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. I can tell you both the both the both of the girls' in birth story are different, completely different. They both have their own their their own special situations in them. Each and every one of us, when we were at anguish, whenever we were at a point where we didn't know where else to turn, but to turn to the Lord, we all have our own stories. Yeah, oh yeah. It might have been that you were at your lowest point in your life and didn't know what to do, and your last your last ditch effort was I've tried everything else. Might as well give Jesus a try. Yeah, yeah. That may have been that may have been somebody's story. That might have been where they were at, that anguish. But once they accepted Christ, that sorrow changes to joy. Yeah. The joy that comes in your heart makes you makes you want to be a better person, makes you want to tell people what has changed about you. I've never given birth. I've stood beside her through twice. It's soon to be three times, but I can tell you all the pain does kind of go away for a little bit whenever you look at that new beginning, when you look at that new life. It goes away instantly. It's the same thing Christ wants for us. We oftentimes want to hang on to that. We go to the altar, we pray about it, and we leave it there, and we pick it up as we leave the door. We'll go and we'll have new beginnings and we're going to start out on this new journey and we're going to go down this path and, and we're not going to go back to where we were until we do. And then it's another trip around the mountain. Christ, whenever he comes in and he, he washes your heart and you get the blood applied to your life, he washes it clean, but nothing. But nothing. The creator of it all says, but nothing. But us, us being wonderful humans and carnally minded say, it's not that easy. It can't be that easy. We can't just wipe away the past because that's like it didn't happen. Yeah, that's kind of what that means. But also, we have a hard time forgiving others. We often say we do, but there's always a part of us. The harness is a little bit of a strong. They really, they really hurt me. They really cut me deep. The same struggle that we have with Jesus wiping our slate clean and us wiping the slate clean for somebody that we've had a had a tiff with. That same emotional struggle that we go through. Christ wants it to be a new. A new thing. He wants it to go away. He wants to wipe it clean. He wants your sorrow to turn to joy. Yeah. Whenever you resolve, whenever there's a resolution between an argument, there's something, there's a peace about it. There's a little bit of a smile usually. It's a, we may not agree, brother, but I'm glad we had an understanding. There's a difference between an understanding and an agree. I don't have to agree with everybody. I'm not, I'm not told that I have to go and have dinner with everybody. But I'm told I'm supposed to love. I'm supposed to love my brothers and sisters. I'm supposed to forgive and let be those things that caused, caused a little bit of toil in our life. Let them go. And forgive. Just as we were forgiven. Right. So as long as I'm on my way back to on, on, on the trip home, and as I was thinking about all this, 
Abby had sent me a, a labor diagram that I'm supposed to read to help her get through labor because the support system is important. Just as a fellowship, support system and labor is important. It's important that I am prepared for her. If I'm not prepared for her, then who she's supposed to rely on? God brought us together to get through tough times. Listen, there ain't much tougher than watching somebody go through labor. It not, it's not a, not a good time, all right? But, I mean, it, it, it is. Let me back up. It is a great thing to witness, yeah. but it is a hard thing to watch because the person you love is in immense pain. Oh, yeah. It is hard, but, but here we are. We're going to do it. Yes. So it is my job to be prepared. So I have to read this 42 page manual. <laughs> um, and we're going to do, we're going to give it our best shot. We're going to read it and we're going to be prepared. Come um, whatever day, the, the, whatever day Brindley wants to join us. But uh, it's important that I read that manual. There's some things in there that I might've forgotten from the last three years. There's some things that maybe are important in that manual that I that I I kind of neglected or that I know but I don't want to read. Manual. Being our father's sons and daughters, sometimes we read. Sometimes we have to blow the dust up. Yeah. Sometimes uh, I'll get to it. Don't cut it. Because I can tell you right now, if I don't read that between now and then, I'm not going to be prepared. Yeah. I'm telling you, there's a life in your path that you will see this week that needs you to know the manual. That, that needs you to know what this says. Yeah. It talks about sometimes you got to leave the milk and get onto the meat. The sooner you make that transition, I'm not telling you that all meat is good. That everybody that's had a steak, there's some gristly stuff in there. And sometimes there's some tough stuff that you have to read. And you might have to go back two or three times and read it. You know, it may not come the first time, but we're in an instant society that wants it in the microwave right now. I need to reveal the first time, God, or it ain't in there. We could read the same story five times in five different walks at different times in your life. Ryan, you stood up here and you, you talked about 1 Peter 5. I've read those scriptures and I've used it for different messages in different contexts multiple times. You continue to read scripture. You continue to pray to God to reveal what he's wanting to tell you in that season. Because the next season, it may have a different meaning. But in that season, it's important to you. It's a scripture that he is revealing to you such a time as this. Yes. And you, you dig in and you listen and you find out what he's telling you. And you write it down. Yep. You take those notes because that's important. That's how that's how most of these words that I get start. It starts with, with something in my spirit or, or uh, something that is revealed to me or whatever it may be is how it starts. And I got to write it down. Because if I don't, then I'm going to forget it. And if I forget it, there's going to come a time that I'm going to need to remember it to tell the person that's in front of me. And then it's like, well, I wrote that down in my mind. And then you forget about it. But now it's time to be instant. And you can't because you shoved it aside because it wasn't as important as whatever was going on on TV. We got to get back to the manual. We got to get back to, to thus say it's the Lord. We can't tickle enough ears. We can't tickle enough hearts to get people to where they need to be in this last, these last days. To the end times, whatever you want to call it, wherever we're at right now. We can't tickle enough ears. We can't, we can't make it pretty enough to get people to want to come and get it. I truly believe if you put it in a package and you put it on Walmart shelf for $199 marked down from a thousand, people would go and buy it. They would go and buy it. They'd be staying in line. Hundreds of people outside on Black Friday special wanting to buy it. Our Father in Heaven gave it to us. So here's your ticket. You don't want to take it. It's too good to be true. If it's too good to be true, if it looks too good to be true, it must be too good to be true. Listen, I'm a blessed man. God has blessed me with three wonderful daughters. Two that I get to snuggle. One that is still still in the old bacon phase, I guess. But and a wife that I can go anywhere with 
And as I go and I minister the word, wherever I go, I know that I have a worshiper beside me. You read in the Old Testament, they sent the worshipers out first. I know Tim feels the same way. He goes and he's got Brian. All right. Brian will go in front of him and battle with him any day of the week. Same thing with Abby with Eve. And I thank God for that. And we got to look around at our blessings and we got to be a little bit more, more thankful for him, to be quite honest. Yes. It's easy to take him for granted. Standing there, I about broke down into tears where I couldn't hardly, I'd have been up here babbling mess watching. Emily doesn't know the words, but she knows she knows that she can say the last word of a course or a verse because there's a pause. She knows that she can say it and people will hear. Her. So she makes sure she says that word. You gotta go back to the manual. You take nothing else. Go back to the manual. When things get tough, jump in your dad's arms. It's Father's Day. We oftentimes look at the dads and we want to celebrate them. Well, let's remember our Heavenly Father today, just as we should every day. But we, we've got a man-made holiday today. Sam Dorsey stood up here a while ago, and uh, he said, I'd like to, he said, I, I'm, I'm the type that would like to preach a Mother's Day message on Father's Day just because I ain't here to please man. It's a man-made holiday. Well, as I went into prosperity this morning, here I am preaching about labor on, on a Father's Day. So I said, well, yeah, got a little, a little Sam in there somewhere, but... but Every day we should be thankful for our heavenly Father, and we should we, we glorify our earthly dads today, and we we will really pick them up, and and we're thankful that we still have them. If we don't have them, we we think about them, and, and it, it, it's it's a hard day. But every day that you get up, that you have air in your lungs, oh yes, is a blessing. Amen. Your worst day on this earth is a blessing. People complain about these heat waves. You watch, you, you go, you go down south in North Carolina. It was 98 degrees yesterday morning, and people were, we were able, we we were able to go out, and we were we were out at a golf course, and people were complaining about how hot it was. They didn't care that they had the help to be out on a golf course. They didn't care that they had a fellowship with somebody beside them that they could be talking about the Lord, or they could be being a being a little bit of a pick me up for somebody. They didn't care about that. It was just too hot. It's too daggone hot to do anything. Well, listen, I've got a Bible that tells me that if you're not, if your name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're going to a place that's real, real hot, where it never quenches. So if we're afraid of a heat wave, people ought to start checking the inside. They ought to check that heart and see if there's a void that only Jesus Christ can fill. He's a patient guy. But the book has to be fulfilled. Everything that's happened has been fulfilled. The New Testament goes hand in hand with the Old Testament. Okay? Hand in hand. Fact. I referenced it this morning. The Lord told told uh, told Sarah that she was going to have a kid. And she laughed. Two chapters later, he said, now at that time, remember when you laughed at me? Here it is. It's something as simple as that. The way you read Isaiah, you read on in, in, in resurrection, everything goes hand in hand. This thing's going to come to an end. It's going to end. When? That's not for us to know. But it's for us to sound the alarm. It's for us to tell people who truly care about their Father in heaven just as much as they care about people down here. Every time we grace this pulpit, every time I grace this, this pulpit, any pulpit, I take it as an honor. Absolutely. Life and death is in the tongue. Right? I, I can't I can't do all this on my own. I thank God that he, he lets me do this. I thank God that he chose me, that he called me to do these things. But oftentimes we look at people that have quote unquote titles and say that's their job. Not anymore, guys. We're all the body of Christ. For this thing to move, the ankles, the feet, the knees, the hips, the legs, the bones, it all has to be working together. Amen. And I don't know if you guys have ever ran with a parachute tied to your back. As a runner, we did that for speed training. You run with a parachute behind you, you're not very fast, Gail. 
No, it pulls your weight. It's resistance. The church has to get up rid of its own resistance yeah. to find its full speed. When you took that, when you took that parachute away, you felt like you could run fast. Maybe you weren't running much faster, but by golly, it made you feel like you were running faster because there wasn't no resistance. It's time we cut the strings of the resistance. Come together. I was going to read in Ephesians 2 a little bit, but I'm, I'm not even going to read that. It's time for us to cut the resistance. Jump back in Dad's arms. Read the manual. And be instant all the time. Don't ever let an opportunity go where you can spread spread the good news. Because people do listen. Even when they put up a wall, they listen. And don't be like Moses. Don't, don't, don't continue to find reasons why you can't. Because God will send you somebody that'll help you. You don't have to speak. You don't have to speak. Moses didn't speak clearly. I dare. God will put people together. He'll link you up. If you if you're if you're weak in an area, listen, I'm not a great singer. He brought me Abby. Yes. Abby doesn't like being in front of crowds and speaking. But she got me. <laughs> Lucky her. But just trust him. Use the manual and follow it. Let him let him lead your path. Don't don't ever put limitations on. Don't ever say, I'm never gonna go somewhere. Because you probably will. And when you do, that's where your greatest blessings are. Mm -hmm. I've wanted to be a boy dad my whole life. Here I am rocking this girl dad thing. I wouldn't trade it for, for anything, oh, baby. Uh, those two redheaded girls back there, and I'm sure the third will be a redhead too. <laughs> the, the things that, the things that God has, has showed me with assurance is that I'm going to produce girls. I'm going to produce red-haired, blue-eyed girls. So <laughs> it has given me 0% reason to think otherwise. So I'm going to continue to... To hold on to that and just take it because they're a blessing. They truly are. And and, and I, would, I, I would do anything for them. If I would do anything for them, how much more would he do for me? Same thing with you. Whether you have kids or not, you have, obviously you have parents. You know the relationship. But that's all I've got this evening. We're going to open up the altar. If you've got stuff that you want to you wanna clean up, you want your yard to look a little bit cleaner for the people from the outside to see, Maybe you want to clean up the stuff in the back. You want to move some of those things that are collecting weeds and got bare spots and just doesn't look real pretty. Address it. Only you can change it. Uh, I can't do it for you. Yep. He's already done everything for us. Yep. We have to do a little bit ourselves. Absolutely. Hey, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, thou givest him not warning. For I think it's to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his blood. Blood with fire at your hands. If God has laid someone in your heart, please talk to him. All I hear from people is God is love. And the Christian ship hate. And yes. Don't them, but we have right. Exactly right. You got something, Anna? Yeah, page 201 in the Heavenly Highway Handbook. 